K3s. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. So um, my talk is a, it will be a sort of um, general survey about uh, some aspects of hypercalamanifolds. And uh, the, the theme will be um, look at K3 surfaces and think of a nice geometric property of K3s and um, does it hold for uh, higher dimensional hypercalamanifolds? And it's uh, the instances I will present is a list that it will be by no means complete. And there's plenty of other things. So I just made a, a, a selection of things that I particularly cared about. So uh, let me maybe just uh, remind you uh, what I will mean by hypercalamanifold. So, um, so M, compact calor, well, I will call it, uh, will be called uh, hypercalor in this talk if it is uh, irreducible holomorphic symplectic. And uh, what this means is that um, it's simply connected and uh, uh, the space of holomorphic two forms is one dimensional and it's spanned by a holomorphic symplectic form, which I'll denote by sigma. And uh, sort of the, the remark, so they're all, all hypercal manifolds in my talk will be compact. So um, by the calabi gau theorem, we know that if M is uh, compact and Keller, then uh, being hyperkeller is equivalent of having holonomy group um, SPN, where uh, 2N is the complex dimension of M. And uh, so, uh, of course, in, in dimension two, um, we have K3 surfaces. And uh, the sort of uh, stupid remark that is, is that um, so in dimension, in dimension two, the groups uh, SP1 is the same as SU1. And, um, but when you go to higher dimensional, of course, that's not the case anymore. And so when you generalize this, you get these um, uh, irreducible homomorphic symplectic manifolds. And we generalize these, you get the uh, so-called uh, strict Calabiaus. So um, what I will um, do is, is, is give a few um, examples of things where um, the, the property that holds for these guys don't hold for this. Um, so this, I mean, it's not any complete statement that I want to make, but it's just that um, I just want to show how, how certain things that um, don't hold for, for Calabiaz. And uh, so in dimension two, we have K3 surfaces are all deformation equivalent. And in higher dimension, we have several deformation classes, which uh, I won't insist too much about, but I will just recall them. Uh, so deformation classes. Uh, and so when I say deformation class, I mean, um, given an example, those small deformations of of um, uh, hypercalamanifold will be hypercalamanifolds. And so I put all things that are deformed um, one into the other in the same class. And so the deformation classes, there, um, there are two series um, in the sense that they uh, appear in every even dimension from four on. And, um, and then there are two exceptional examples. So the series is, uh, so you start with a, a K3 surface and in fact, S will denote a K3 surface throughout the, throughout the talk. And, uh, and so SN, uh, this will be the Hilbert um, or do a D space Hilbert scheme of uh, N points on S. Uh, and this is a famously a crepent resolution of the symmetric product of the K3 surface. And then we have their deformation. So the maybe let me. So the Hilbert scheme, and uh, so we have S N and uh, deformations, which includes, uh, and this is, is very important for for 
much of the theory, it includes uh, uh, moduli spaces of sheaves on K3s. And um, so that's the first uh, series of examples. The second is um, generalized Kummer varieties. And uh, let me just remind you that uh, if T is um, a torus, two torus, uh, I can take the quotient by plus or minus one. It's a singular um, variety, but there's a resolution, which is a K3. And there is a, a generalization of this fact, which leads to uh, hypercalum manifolds of dimension 2n for any n greater or equal to two. And again, we have the deformations which includes um, something related to moduli spaces of sheaves on uh, a two torus or an abelian surface. I won't say anything about, about these, these examples. And then there's these two exceptional examples. In dimension uh, six, and dimension uh, 10, which are usually called OG6 and OG10, and they were uh, due to a grady. Whereas these examples here um, were uh, Beauville and Fujiki in dimension four. Um, okay, so maybe, uh, so we have these examples and these are uh, obtained as, uh, as resolutions as symplectic resolutions of singular, uh, of certain singular moduli spaces. So um, if you want the first analogy is just uh, constructing these things by uh, finding symplectic resolutions. So the, um, mm, the first uh, thing I wanted to mention is um, refer to the pre-recorded the talk by, uh, by Wazan and, um, and it's um, about the, um, the lattice structure on the second cohomology group. And uh, so it's, um, it's a group. Uh, if you look at the integral cohomology group of the K3 surface with the cup product, this is a lattice of signature uh, three, 19, and you can write down as abstract lattice what it is, we won't need this here. And um, in Wazen's pre-recorded -pre talk, um, the, the, the theorem of um, Beville, uh, Bogomolov and, and Fujiki was, was recalled, namely, for, so first thing is that there exists um, Q, an integral indivisible, quadratic form on, uh, so if M is a hypercalum manifold on the integral cohomology, second integral cohomology. And with respect to this, it, the signature is uh, um, three B2 minus three. And uh, the second property is that the, there exists a constant in the a non negative positive, um, rational constant such that uh, for any cohomology class in H2, the, uh, so this is dimension 2n, um, the alpha to the 2n is equal to this. And uh, the reason why we're calling this is that I'm, I'm gonna use it. And, uh, and so that's why I wanna, to, to remind you about this. And uh, sort of the, the, the example is that if M is um, a Hilbert scheme of points, then um, you can write this as the cohomology of the K3 plus uh, Z times delta, where delta is, well, maybe I'll just, uh, so, uh, so two times delta is a class of the exceptional divisor of the Hilbert child morphism. So it's a locus of, of points 
of non-reduced points. It supports the locus of non-reduced points. And so the, the, the integral quadratic form on this, so first of all, this decomposition is, is orthogonal. And uh, here it just, uh, it's the, um, it's the pro cup product and uh, the, the square, oops, the square of delta is just mi minus two n uh, minus one. Okay, um, so, and the other thing that uh, I will also use is the result of Verbitsky, which also I think was um, Verbitsky, is that uh, when I look at uh, the map from the symmetric powers of the, uh, now I'll go with Q coefficients. So I'll just write M to um, the cohomology of, of M, then the kernel is generated by the classes, the nth plus one powers of the classes that are isotropic with respect to the form. Okay, so this is uh, just uh, a couple uh, things that, um, that I will use. And um, so, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, period mappings, very little, but I, I need a, a couple of things to talk about to Riley theorems. So, so, um, um, so now we have this um, M hyperkeller with a, a quadratic form and we fix an isomorphism of this with uh, an abstract lattice lambda. And so what this gives me is uh, a map from the deformation space of M, which is a uh, smooth deformation or an obstructed to um, the projectivization of the complexification of this, uh, of this lattice. And uh, I'll call this map P and the map associates to a deformation here, T corresponding to some deformation, the, uh, the line, uh, phi of, or maybe complexified phi of the H to zero of um, MT. So because this is just a ball, I can identify the cohomology of all, um, all the fibers by parallel transport. And uh, I associate to a uh, complex deformation of M, the line in the lattice spanned by the holomorphic uh, to form of this deformation. And uh, one, one, um, one consequence of the definition, of course, is that this space is one dimensional, so it's a line. And it lies inside the paired domain. I think uh, uh, we'll talk about paired domains in, in the talk on Friday, so I won't say so anything. Um, uh, so this is a local isomorphism, I think was also in the recorded talk, local isomorphism. So P is a local isomorphism. And then of course you may ask questions like, um, um, well, before asking that question, I need the, the moduli space. So I'll define M sigma, uh, the set of all pairs M phi, where M is a hypercal manifold of fixed dimension. Phi is an isomorphism of the second cohomology group with uh, uh, of M with lambda, just like, like here. And so here up to a natural um, isomorphism relation. And uh, we have this paired map into D. And so the questions here are uh, naturally, uh, is P surjective? Is it uh, globally injective? Because it's a local in, uh, isomorphism when restricted to, to, the, to the deformation space. So, um, so before I answer these questions, and I'll just uh, quote some, some results, uh, um, I, will, uh, I, I would like to talk a little bit about limit of isomorphisms. And uh, let me remind you um, sort of very classical um, fact about, about K3 surfaces. So suppose S, oops, 
S over delta is a family of uh, say corded K3 surfaces where the central fiber has one point that is locally um, of this form. So locally around uh, this point, the, the map is given uh, like this. So the central fiber has one, uh, one node and uh, the total space is smooth. So then uh, when you have such a thing, you can base change and when you base change, you put a, a T squared there. And uh, the important point is that the total space, so S, S uh, prime is a singular at P. And, um, and this allows you, so if you blow up the point, you've got, of course, we get the, the exceptional divisor is a quadric, but, um, we can blow down the two rulings of the quadric and obtain two family that, and they give a small resolution of the total space. So this is a sort of the, um, we have these two families. This is a well-known picture, which are isomorphic uh, away from zero. Uh, and uh, the two central fibers are actually isomorphic, though the family themselves are not isomorphic. So this does not extend. Um, so the, um, this is, um, in fact, the, the two central fibers are, are isomorphic, but the, um, this is called an Atiyah flaw, which um, I'm sure everybody here knows about. So let me remind you now, um, there's a similar picture in um, for hypercalers, which um, is um, very pretty. Uh, so if um, if M is a two-dimensional hypercal manifold and P is um, a projective space, a sub a sub variety inside inside M, the um, the normal then the normal bundle of, let me just call it P, of P and M is isomorphic because, so this is, uh, sorry, such a P is always a Lagrangian subvariety. And this implies that this is just uh, omega one of P. And, uh, and hence, if I look at the projectivization of the normal bundle with its projection onto, onto P, this is uh, inside P cross uh, P dual, where uh, P dual is the dual projective space. It's just the incident sub variety. So the pairs of point hyperplane such that a point lies on the hyperplane. And so we have the same projection. And so the same thing happens uh, um, in, um, because because of this fact of this uh, this normal bundle with these two rulings, you can uh, blow up um, the projective space in M and then contract it um, along the other ruling, and you get something which is birational to M prime. And so, if Keller, then uh, M prime is uh, is hyperkeller manifold. And in fact, uh, you can do this by, in fact, you can find families where the central fiber is your original manifold. And, um, and in fact, what you can find is if you just uh, in the same way as, as in the, the idea flop, you can find a, a birational map between two families whose central fibers are respectively M and M prime and uh, such that we have an isomorphism for uh, T not equal to zero and in the central fiber, it's the Mukai flop. So in particular, um, um, uh, a hypercal manifold and its Mukai flop are deformation equivalent. And, uh, and so the, the, the theorem of Hoibrecht that um, I, uh, I would like to re remind you of is that uh, if I have a uh, birational, oops, if I have a uh, birational, of course, I, I'm always going to say birational, but uh, it's bir more bimeromorphic if they're only Keller, but uh, I'll just say birational. Uh, so if I have two birational hypercal manifolds, then um, 
there exist uh, two families such that the central fibers are the things I'm interested in and um, these two things are isomorphic away from the central from, from the central fiber and if I look at the limit of the graphs of these isomorphisms the the limit will be the graph of the uh, birational map that I started from plus some other stuff that um, now I'm not going to be precise about um, and so the, the, the corollary of this, there are two things I would like to mention is that uh, birational uh, hypercal manifolds are deformation equivalent. And, um, and the second is that, uh, so if I start with um, 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 a hypercal manifold with this uh, isomorphism the, with a lattice. So I, I should have said, uh, so phi is from H2 and Z to lambda. This is called a marking. I didn't say that. So if I, if I start with, um, with a marked hypercal manifold, then, and I have uh, something uh, birational, a hypercal manifold that is birational to to m prime, then I can uh, by by using the parallel transport of these of this family that from the theorem I can construct a marking m prime phi prime so that uh, these two um, elements so there exist a marking on the birational guy such that uh, the pair the points. M uh, phi and M prime phi prime in the moduli space are non-separated. And uh, so for the K3 surfaces of the ITA flop, the, the, the two markings differ by the reflection of the minus two curve. And, um, and so this is sort of the, the direct uh, generalization of, of this fact. So already for K3 surfaces, the, the period map that I mentioned uh, can't be uh, globally injective because of this non-separatedness uh, issue. Um, but at least for um, K3 surfaces, the, the non-separated points correspond to isomorphic K3 surfaces. Whereas here we have this issue that uh, in fact, there are things that are birational, but uh, uh, but in fact, non-isomorphic. And there exist, in fact, examples where they're birational and not isomorphic. And um, so before uh, talking about the Torelli theorem for hypercalers and the, the sort of precise statement, let me make a remark, which um, I, uh, I, I learned to, about preparing for this talk, but Friedman has an example I, I, there are probably other examples, but this is the example I found um, of uh, Calabio three folds that are uh, birational, exist uh, pairs of Calabio three folds that are birational. Um, in fact, they differ by elementary flop on a rational curve on a minus one minus one curve, but not, um, but not um, deformation equivalent. They're not uh, homomorphic even. So um, I thought that was a, a pretty neat example. It's um... okay. So um, so let me maybe uh, now is a good time to state the. Uh, the, the global Torelli. So uh, rem I remember that, so this M uh, uh, lambda was uh, the moduli space of uh, marked hypercal manifolds. And uh, I would like to focus on one connected component.
There is a question, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to answer your question in uh, in a second. Um, so there's like the 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 polarized version of this is is uh, is good because if a birational map induces um, sends a Keller class to a Keller class, then it's an isomorphism. Okay, so. Um, so the, the first statement is a, a statement of Hoibrecht's and uh, that it's um, the, the period map when restricted to every connected component is, um, is rejected. Okay, so that's the first statement. And then there's a global Torelli theorem. Uh, the hyperkeller version of it is, um, um, due to Rabitsky and uh, Markman and Hoibrex. Um, so the, the statement is uh, that uh, two points have the same period if and only if uh, M is uh, irrational. Uh, so for um, for for K three surfaces, of course, you have the uh, sort of nice version. So re uh, let me remind you for for K threes, the Hodge theoretic version of this, which uh, just says that uh, two K three surfaces um, uh, are isomorphic if and only if there exists a Hodge isometry. And, uh, and there's also, of course, the, the polarized version um, of this. So which asks for a Hodge isometry sending uh, a polarization to a polarization. And uh, sort of the analog statements for, um, for hypercal manifolds are, um, there's a slight difference in this. And uh, so for hypercalers, um, you have M, uh, of course, you need the, to include birationals. Two hypercal manifolds are birational if and only if there exist F from H2 of MZ to H2 of M prime Z. And now it's not, you don't only ask for it to be a Hodge isometry, but you need also to, for it to be a parallel transport, a uh, parallel transport operator. So I'm not going to say much about this, but um, sort of parallel transport operators are what you think they are. So they're uh, isomorphisms in cohomology induced by um, parallel transport on smooth families. Um, and so in, in the case of K3 surfaces, you don't need to include this, but in in, in the case of, of hypercal manifolds you do. And, and people have been doing, mostly Markman, have been studying what is the group of, of parallel transport operators from the cohomology group of one hypercal manifolds into itself. And these are really important for, uh, for geometric applications because this is a kind of statement that uh, allows you to, so uh, application, an example of application is, is a study automorphisms of uh, hypercal manifolds by looking at lattice uh, iso isomorphisms like that. And of course, you need to know which of them are Powell transport operators. OK, so and, and, and uh, maybe, what time is it? Um, There's a, the Hodge theoretic version where here I, um, um, if you if you ask um, this parallel transport operator to send a Keller class to a Keller class, then um, the uh, the um, 
the two hypercal manifolds will be uh, isomorphic. So I'm just doing. It. Okay, so um, this is a, a little bit about um, about Torelli theorems, and I'm going to use uh, um, this uh, in a little bit when I talk about degenerations, which is uh, I'm going to say a couple things about this. And uh, uh, so, okay, so again, the, uh, the, the family of quartic K3 is degenerating to the nodal uh, uh, guy is sort of the leading example. And, uh, and you can think of the, 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 the family of quartic K3s as, as um, having the property. So first of all, of course, the monodromy is finite. It's just a Picard left that's associated to the vanishing cycle, and um, and uh, and we saw that up to a base change, uh, um, there exists a smooth filling. And in fact, we found two smooth fillings. And where so smooth fillings? I mean, uh, uh, so um, maybe let me. Uh, say it in a second, um, and let me give you sort of the general statement, which I won't be very precise about. But uh, and I'm only going to talk about the finite monodromy degenerations. I'm not going to say anything about um, the other cases. So Kulikov and uh, Dinkum and Person, and uh, so. Now this is a, um, a degeneration of K3s. For example, a projective degenerations, or I could ask that the fibers of the, the components of the central fiber are uh, algebraic. But uh, so this, the, the statement is that then there exists maybe up to a base change, uh, there exists a, a so-called smooth filling by which I mean, um, a family where, uh, so this is now a smooth family. Maybe non-projective, but uh, even if the original one was projective. So meaning that all the fibers are smooth. And, uh, and in fact, in, 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 the, in the example of the ATF flop, we, we found two different smooth fillings that had the same central fiber, but were not had non-isomorphic total space. And so the uh, sort of the nicest generalization of this um, holds true for higher dimensional hypercal manifolds. So this was proved in a paper with uh, Kalar Lazan was then from a, a few years ago. And um, so let M to delta be a projective degeneration of um, hypercal manifolds. So I mean that uh, pi is a projective morphism. Uh, oh, there's a there's a question. It's uh, the um, the period map is surjective, and uh, the image is the um, where do I go? Sorry, let me find. Okay, uh, it was way up, but the 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 you had the um, um, the the image of the period map is the open subset of the quadric uh, um, defined by so um, well, D is um, x such that x squared is equal to zero and x x bar is greater than equal to zero inside uh, this. And uh, and you can relate that to this the Rosmanian positive three planes, and uh, I should know the uh, I should know what exactly the relationship is, but I don't remember now. But onto this guy here, it is uh, um, it is surjective. Okay. Uh, 
Um, okay, so I was stating the um, and the theorem here, and um, so then, um, and I assume that there is finite monodromy on um, H2, say with Q coefficients of, of one fiber, one smooth fiber. And so then uh, again, up to a base change, which I'm gonna, ignore about, then there exists a smooth filling. Meaning that uh, the same thing, there exists a, a family um, over the base change such that the fibers are uh, isomorphic for a T not equal to zero and the central fiber is smooth hypercalar. Okay, so this is the sort of, uh, direct uh, generalization of, of this result. And uh, let me just mention a couple of variations of this that um, are, are, I think, um, worth noticing. And so uh, it's also in this uh, KOSB paper um, that the, the finite monodromy assumption. So first of all, it's, uh, I think it's worth noticing that the monodromy, finiteness of monodromy is on just on the H2. And then of course, it, uh, once you have a smooth filling, it means that the monodromy is finite on all the rest of the cohomology groups. And so the, uh, another unequivalent condition for a degeneration of hypercalar manifolds to have, um, a fi to have finite monodromy on H2 is that uh, in, um, in a, in, if you look at um, a semi-stable model for the degeneration, I only care that the central fibers are, all the components are reduced. That's why I'm asking for a semi-stable model. Uh, then there exists uh, uh, one non-unit, one component Z inside uh, the central fiber that is not uniruled. And uh, in fact, as a consequence, the non unital component is, uh, is so maybe that was the first remark and the second remark is that uh, the, the non unitable component is, is unique, but also uh, Z is birational to a uh, hypercalum manifold M prime and uh, M prime is deformation equivalent to the smooth fibers of the family. So, uh, so basically, when I look at a degeneration of, of hypercal manifolds, say um, I look at the semi-stable model, and if there is one component that is non-uniruled, then that component has a birational model that is hypercal manifold. But also, I'm not changing the deformation class. So it's not that by uh, degenerating and then resolving, I can get uh, hypercal manifolds in other deformation classes, because um, because in fact you stay within that class, and uh, in fact this is in some sense a generalization of the of the theorem that we had earlier of Heubrich that saying two birational things are deformation equivalent. Um, okay, so it is uh, twenty. There are twenty minutes. Uh, I was planning to give. Uh, Can I ask a question? Yep. Um, so do we re really prove that uh, there is a smooth filling uh, when the, after Besson where the monodromy is finite? I believe that we prove there is a smooth filling after changing the possibly the relative birational type of the family. Um, I think we prove uh, both. Uh, so we can also uh, uh, fill in the, the original family or, or best. So in fact, the proof that I was going to give is the proof is that 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 proves. Uh, that uh, in fact, um, you find, uh, oops, you find, uh, so what Claire is saying is the statement is that what it implies is you get a family, maybe after base change, uh, where um, for every, even for T not equal to zero, we get, um, 
we get by rational maps. And this was a proof that I was going to give because it uses the 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 um, uh, Torelli theorems that I mentioned earlier. But in fact, once you have this thing here, then using the uh, the uh, minimal model program plus the theory of Namikawa, you actually get that uh, um, because what you do, so you pass to a semi-stable model, you apply the MMP, you get these uh, so-called uh, DLT de degenerations, and then you prove that the central fiber is uh, uh, a singular, possibly singular symplectic variety. And then you use Namikawa to get the result of the, uh, the, the statement that I, that I mentioned. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, okay, so let me give, so uh, uh, the, the, the proof of this slightly uh, different statement, which is uh, maybe I'll, so, um, so what I want to prove is assuming finite monodromy, or I can um, assume trivial monodromy, um, up to base change, then I want to construct this family here where uh, the property will only be the, this birational um, fact, which, um, and sorry, of course here I should have said, and uh, with M, oops, well, okay. with M uh, prime zero smooth and hypercalic, right? Um, okay, so uh, let me just give a very brief sketch because uh, I don't have too much time, but I, I just want to show you how the, the things that I mentioned earlier about global Torelli can be used for this kind of question. So the, uh, so I assume, uh, uh, assume, um, trivial monodromy. So now if I have a marking of, uh, so I have my family and away from the, the origin, I have a smooth family. And because of the monodromy is, is trivial, then uh, I can identify, once I fix the marking of one fiber, I can uh, identify, uh, it, can, it, it gives me markings of all of the fibers. In particular, I have a map into uh, the period domain uh, inside uh, uh, P of lambda C. And in fact, because uh, this morphism is, uh, is projective, I don't land inside the, uh, the period domain, but I land inside the locus corresponding to complex deformations where the, um, the class of the polarization give of, of, this, uh, of this morphine stays at type 1,1. One, one. And so now um, I, I get uh, by Griffith's extension theorem that this map uh, lifts to, so maybe this I'll call P star and this calls P. So in particular, I get a point here in, uh, in this thing. So now I use the, uh, the surjectivity of, um, of, the, um, of, the, of the period map from the, from the connected component of marked hypercalers that correspond to the family I'm interested in. And uh, what this means, so surjectivity of the period map means that uh, there exist, I don't know why I guess, there exists uh, um, a polarized or marked uh, hypercal manifold um, such that when I look at the deformation space of this and, um, and I look at the marking coming from, from here, I get a map um, such that the, the, of course, the central fiber here corresponding to this goes exactly to this uh, P zero. Not only that. First of all, uh, M is projective, and in fact, when I when I look at the deformations of um, of um, 
of uh, of this of this thing that preserved the the algebraicity of this class sort of I land exactly here but now this is um, a local isomorphism so I can lift the map uh, from this disk to here so now I on this disk I have the original family and then I can pull back the family uh, universal family over this guy and by construction the um, the periods of the fibers mt and m prime t are the same and uh, and by construction they're in the same deformation the the same connected component and so by the global Torelli they're birational so that was a sort of quick uh, sketch of this and uh, let me mention um, again the um, uh, uh, the fact that this is uh, not true for Cali L3 foes so false for um, Cali L and uh, again um, sort of the example I'll mention is by by Friedman even though there's also uh, example due to uh, was on and then I think Morgan maybe and uh, sort of the example I'll, I'll mention is a, so a generic family of um, of quintic threefolds that degenerate to an A2 singularity there's another question Oh no, it's the same. Uh, this is but the, the monodromy is not finite then. Hmm? But, uh, this is the, uh, this I think should be finite monodromy. And, um, and uh, the observation of Wang is that uh, there is there exists no smooth filling and um, let me mention uh, in one word uh, or maybe two why there is no smooth filling and basically what he shows what Wang shows is that if I have a smoothable um, Calabiao threefold with uh, Gorenstein and terminal singularities, then um, so the if the singularities are or actual singularities are not smooth, there is finite monodromy, and there's no smooth filling. And uh, the interesting remark to compare hypercal manifolds is that uh, for hypercal manifolds, so maybe I shouldn't say hypercalar because they're singular, uh, but I should say holomorphic. Uh, symplectic varieties. I mean, there's a technical definition which um, uh, maybe I should uh, I should avoid, but there is some class of uh, singular varieties whose smooth locus has a holomorphic symplectic form. Um, and uh, the moment you ask the singularities to be terminal and uh, and Q factorial then uh, smooth is equivalent to smoothable. So the singularities are rigid. So you can't have smoothable Calabiao threefolds, uh, the equivalent of the, 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 the families that give the counter example to, um, to the existence of family with finite monodromy, but no smooth fillings. And this is uh, again, Namikawa. Okay, so um, so the uh, this was uh, all I wanted to say about about degeneration. Um, 
and uh, and maybe let me. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, was uh, Lagrangian vibrations. And uh, so let me recall, uh, remind you what happens for K3s. Suppose I have a morphism, which is proper, and um, it has connected fibers. And, um, and maybe a, a, a B is normal. And maybe let me exclude the trivial case that B is a, a point. And, uh, and so then of course, uh, I mean, it's a sort of pretty straightforward to see that the, so the either uh, B is a, a singular uh, K3. So this is a, 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 if it's not an isomorphism, so F, is an isomorphism or a symplectic resolution, or um, when the, in the case of dimension one, B is a P1 and a F and is elliptic vibration. Okay, so that's um, sort of very straightforward to, to see this, and uh, the thing that I very uh, that I like about this theorem of Matsushita. Is that uh, the same dichotomy is true in uh, for higher dimensional uh, hypercalic manifolds, and so maybe I'll just uh, um, um, so let me let me sort of give you um, so let me give the statement of the theorem and then I'll see how much time uh, is left. So if uh, m uh, to b. Uh, be uh, normal and uh, dimension of B is not, so B is not a point and uh, dimension is not maximal. And I want to assume that I have, uh, the morphism is proper and again, connected fibers. And uh, the statement is that then the dimension of B is equal to N and F um, is a Lagrangian vibration. So the general fiber uh, is um, an abelian variety. Um, though maybe this part is not due to Matsushita, but okay, the um, a complex stories if you want and um, and the last thing is that F is equidimensional. Um, and then I should also say that uh, is that if B is smooth, then B is PN and uh, by result of Heubrecht's and Shu uh, in dimension four, uh, B is always P2 without the uh, smoothness assumption. And uh, let me just, um, because I uh, just give you one uh, idea of how to show this, uh, because of course, the, so the corollary is, is that the, there's this dichotomy of, uh, uh, of morphisms uh, from uh, of morphism, uh, proper morphisms with connected fibers. Um, of course, not to, to a point. So either you have uh, F as an isomorphism uh, or a symplectic resolution, or F is a Lorangian vibration. So you don't have any intermediate uh, dimensional things. And, um, and uh, so let me maybe just give one word and then I'll stop here. Um, uh, why, how do you see that um, it, it, that B is, is half dimensional and uh, just because it uses this result of Rubitsky that I mentioned and that um, Claire mentioned in, in her recorded talk. 
So um, I think this, this uh, so now I'll, I'll assume that B is smooth. I'll, I'll, I'll do this in the case that B is smooth. And I think this, this, uh, this proof is due to Heubrich's. So you look at a Keller class on B, and you look at the, at the pullback of, uh, of the Keller class. And uh, of course, this is not equal to zero. But uh, because I assuming B is not the uh, dimension to N, then I have that uh, this class um, is equal to zero. And so what this means is that uh, it lies in, in the kernel of the map from the symmetric product of the second cohomology group to the full cohomology group. So in particular, I have that uh, this, uh, is equal to zero. And uh, because this is a non-zero form, I have that this is not equal to zero. And so it's a Keller class on, on, on uh, and so this uh, gives me immediately dimension of B is equal to N. So then of course you have to prove that it's a Lagrangian vibration and that it's dimensional and so on and so forth. But I just thought that this uh, little application of Rubitsky's theorem was, uh, was nice to give. And I guess I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Juliet. Uh, are there any questions that people would like to ask? Okay, can you maybe repeat your last part? So how, how did you get this to the M and plus one's power is equal to zero and the N's power is not zero? So the um, the the result of Rubitsky is that uh, the kernel of the map from uh, so sim uh, star of h to to h star is um, the uh, generated by alpha to the n plus one such that q to the alpha is um, is equal to zero. So in particular, if I have um, a class alpha, which is not equal to zero with Q uh, alpha equal to zero, then, um, then alpha to the N is not equal to zero because nothing in, in smaller degree goes to zero. And, and sorry, I, I should say, I, I, I need the Fujiki relation, sorry. I thank you. Alpha, alpha to the N plus one as well. Uh, yes. I, I need uh I need the Fujiki relation that says that uh, if the the alpha to the two n is equal to a constant times q to the alpha to the n. So if this is equal to zero, then so is this. But you did not prove that uh, this is a Lagrangian vibration. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. So, so to 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 show that you need uh, you need to say that uh, when you um, when you restrict to sigma to f, this is equal to zero, and um, and this is uh, is uh, so is implied by the fact that uh, this uh, is um, times omega of Keller form to the appropriate power is equal to zero because sigma sigma bar is uh, the sum of two squares of Keller forms or on a twister deformation. And so again, for this, you need to use uh, Fujiki and some relations. And this, this just shows that the general fiber is Lagrangian, so for F smooth, and, uh, and uh, to show that every fiber is Lagrangian, it, you need a, a, a non, highly non-trivial result of Collar that uh, says that the higher direct images of um, the canonical uh, bundle is um, torsion free. But you, the flatness I think is not so hard. Well, the flatness, once you have equidimensionality, 
But yes, yes, you prove first uh, Lagrangian, then uh... you you first prove that the gel fiber is Lagrangian, and this means that if you look at the um, conjugate of the symplectic form, and you look at it as a section of H zero of B R two F flow star of O um, M. Uh, this means that this section is torsion. It's supported on away from the smooth fibers. Now, by the result, of, so Collar uh, uh, implies because because uh, o, omega m is trivial, Collar implies that this guy here, the higher direct images, is torsion free. So if, uh, if I have a section that vanishes generically, it vanishes identically. And, uh, and this tells you that for any uh, fiber or component of the fiber, if you look at uh, a resolution and uh, the pullback of the, this form on this resolution, that's, uh, that's zero. And so this bounds the dimension of the fibers that can't jump. Do we have any other questions for Julia? So I believe that in our paper, you, you, you gave a, an, uh, another proof of the filling uh, theorem, mm -hmm. so uh, the, not, not using the Fabitsky theorem. Right, exactly. So that, that uses the MMP and the, uh, yeah. and the Namikawa deformation argument, which is why, um, the uh, I mean it's a uh, it's more technical and uh, so this is why I it's it's quite technical so this is why I gave the other proof your proof but um, the um, um, the 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 thing you were asking me about the statement uh, you use it with with the other proof mm. yes okay. Well, maybe we should thank Julia again. Thank you. Uh, Robert, do you want to?